summer, season of festivals, and of jam sessions, of course. But maybe you are not super comfortable with or just used to jam sessions. So how to actually jam? Emily Valskan here and in this video I would like to talk about jam sessions because jam sessions are an important part of Scandinavian folk music. Of course it's also a part of other types of music such as jazz and so on but I don't know about that <laughs> and I'm gonna talk mostly about Swedish folk music. Of course you can probably apply what I'm gonna say to similar uh, uh, styles for example in other parts of Scandinavia or also in other parts of Europe. Jamming is important in Scandi folk music because it is just a way basically to get together with people who share the common interest around folk music and have fun with them. But there are also other goals to jamming, like practicing your musical skills, uh, because playing alone in your room and playing with other people, like in a festival or something in a camping, is very different and it like teaches you different things. And also, one of the main goals of jamming is to actually transmit, share and spread repertoire, so tunes, melodies. And jam sessions can be very different from one place to another, from one country to another and from one group of people to another. Basically, you have cultures of jam sessions, different cultures. For example, if you are from the Celtic music scene, you are used to just play the melody. It's not very okay to play second voices in those jams, from what I've heard. Um, I don't know them well, so well. Um, but in Sweden, it's totally fine to play second voices. Actually, many people will like if you do play second voices. So this is different. Also, the number of time you repeat a tune. I mean, maybe you play Swedish folk music, but in Italy, and maybe in Italy it's repeating 10 times every tune. I don't know, I have no idea, but maybe. While in Sweden you usually play every, play every tune two or three times maximum. This is dictated by the culture of the jam. And, um, and I'm gonna try to help you understand how to fit in the culture of the precise jam session you are trying to join. I'm just gonna, gonna give you some tips um, and th those are based on my experience obviously of what I've seen and learned and lived in jam sessions in Sweden and in other countries but always in Swedish music. The main thing I would like to um, to just bring up first is that there are basically two axes, two types of jam sessions. You have the organized ones. So it's basically sessions that are written somewhere or organized by someone. For example, people meeting every month to practice a repertoire at someone's place and there are almost always the same people meeting there. That's pretty similar to like the Irish jam at the Irish pub every Thursday, for example. Um, and you have the non-organized jam, so the spontaneous ones. Like this is a lot in festivals that just some people start to play a tune and other join and it's just a happy mess of playing tunes together. This is what in Swedish is called buskspel, which is basically jamming, like improvising together and it's spontaneous, there is no leader, there is no organizer and it can be very messy and it can be many people and it can be many different settings. And don't consider those two types as completely different. There are many times when it's actually a bit in between, like you may have a bunch of friends who have not seen each other for a long time and they just decide that on that festival, on Saturday around 3 o'clock we meet under that big tree and we play together. That's a kind of organized jam session but maybe you are very welcome to join even if you were not told about this, or this kind of organized jam session. And here I would like to bring a little um, triangle of please be careful because sometimes it's not easy to make the difference between a jam session and a rehearsal. Let me explain. 
Uh, in festivals you often have Spielmann slogs, so groups of players playing together traditional music, who are rehearsing together because you're, they're gonna play a bit later that day or that festival. This happens very often in Sweden, also like in student Spielmann slogs you have uh, some competitions and like the evening before they are gonna be playing um, their tunes together to rehearse a little bit while being already in the festival or to warm up or something. And it's not always very obvious if a gathering of people uh, playing crazily some Scandinavian tunes together is a rehearsal or a jam session and you might be a bit unsure. The best way is to just ask, like you notice that they are playing the same tunes and it seems to have an arrangement, like they play this tune and then that one and then they make a break and so on, so this is very probably a rehearsal. Just ask one of the people, just go and like, is that a rehearsal or a jam session? Can I join? Sometimes even if it's a rehearsal you can sit in a corner and at, at least listen or try to find the tunes quietly uh, on your fiddle, that's be fine. But maybe it's not. I have had once I was rehearsing with my band on a festival and there was one guy coming and just starting to jam with us and we're like, nah, sorry, but this is actually a rehearsal and not a jam session. So sometimes it's not obvious at all. So be a bit careful. And I would also like to tell you to understand the culture of the jam session you're entering, try to analyze a bit how people look like, how they behave, how they, what they play how they play, which style. For example, if you are very young and it's a bunch of elderly people playing music, it might work super well, but it might also not be what you want. For example, the cliche is that young people want to play fast and modern tunes and that old people want to play uh, more traditional tunes and quieter and slower. That might be totally wrong, but that's a bit the cliche. So think about that. Think about where are the people from? Like, if you are from another country and you are in Sweden, maybe they have other habits than you have. Or maybe just if they are from the north of Sweden and you are from the southwestern Sweden, for example. This kind of stuff. Also, um, see like what's how they are working together. Is there a leader? Is there someone who is really like leading the thing? Also, is the style what you like? Are they playing gamal dance and maybe you don't want to play gamal dance? Or are they playing very jazzy stuff and maybe you don't want that? Or maybe you do. So try to check a bit that. Also analyze a bit the type of tunes they're playing. If they're playing lots of slang polskas, they might be from the southern Sweden. And maybe if you don't know any slang polska, you're gonna feel super outside the thing. So try to find some kind of match between you and the people there um, because it's gonna help you feel part of that group. Second chapter I want to talk about is the instrument. Some instruments are extremely welcome and some are not and this depends a lot on the situation on, and the people. The first thing you have to consider is the like practical limitations of your instrument. For example, if your instrument has a weird scale, like a hang drum, or has a possibility to play only in some keys, like some flutes, you're gonna have limits about what you can play with people. Uh, also, there are some instruments that are very loud, like bagpipe, hurdy-gurdy to some extent, because you can remove some strings and play only on the melody strings, but still it's pretty loud. Um, even clarinet can be loud, or saxophone, some instruments are louder, and that might be a problem sometimes. Let me explain. You're playing the Highland bagpipes, or a super heavy, loud instrument, and there is a bunch of harp players in a corner having a quiet jam. If you want to join their session, I mean, you could, but you're just gonna cover the sound completely and so you cannot really share anything with them so even if you would really like to join them even if they are your friends or even if they do really like bagpipe it's maybe not the best idea to join this jam in particular try to find instruments that are pretty much as loud as you are in the other direction if you are playing a very quiet instrument like a singer for example realize that you're never gonna match the level of a saxophone for example so don't kill your voice if you're a singer. You're gonna be quieter than them. You're not gonna be heard very much. That's just how it is, because of your instrument. That's fine. Now I would like to introduce what I call the noise space. 
basically noise space is how much space you take with your sound and with your inevitable uh, amount of disturbance. Uh, don't take it negatively, it's not disturbance like you're a super disturbing person, it's just like the normal little things that happen when you play, little mistakes and so on. Basically, if this is the whole noise space of your jam session and you are six people, theoretically, every person participating in this jam session should get one sixth of the, the noise space. In practice it's a bit different. Some people are expected to take more, for example very good players or the organizer of a jam session for example, and some people are expected to take a bit less like beginners or newcomers in a group. It's not totally fair but it's like that. <laughs> um, but basically if we consider your sixth of noise space. If you're playing a kind of loud instrument, such as sec pipa in a bunch of fiddlers, the loudness of your instrument is already taking a lot of noise space, of your part of the cake, kind of, or of the pizza. Then you have the normal amount of little disturbance that you're gonna play, because no one is playing perfect. And then you see that what is left here is very small and what is left there is the, the amount of things you are going to do that are crazy a bit um, it's for example playing crazy second voices improvising or stuff like that it's very small and that's the only one you can really act on because your loudness if you have an instrument that has a sound that is fixed like a sec pipa you cannot play quieter um, so this is not possible to change. This is not possible to change either, because no one plays perfectly. But that you can act on, so you are sure that you are keeping your sound, your noise space, one-sixth. If you are playing an instrument like a fiddle, you can totally, uh, if you want to play, for example, a lot of crazy things... Yay! I want to play lots of improvisation! And lots of second voices and I mean I do make some little mix mistakes because I'm human and sometimes I sound bad then probably you should play a bit quieter because then you're taking less noise space that's also a general rule when you're playing the melody you can play strong loud when you're playing um, a second voice or trying to improvise or something you're playing quieter so also, if you're playing a loud instrument, stick to the melody, basically. That's also what it shows. If you're a harp player, and by nature, your instrument is pretty quiet, you also have a lot of space for, well, natural mistakes, but also for craziness. Yay! Playing second voices and weird riffs and so on. So I hope you understand what you what I mean by um, the noise space, which depends on the instrument, its natural loudness, but also um, on your skills a little bit. This part, this green part, can be bigger or smaller. If you're messing a lot around, maybe you're tired or drunk or whatever, <laughs> um, you're taking more space there, so then you have less space for the rest. And um, you can adapt your loudness if you're playing an instrument that can, but sometimes you cannot, because you have limits. I hope this was clear. When you enter a jam session, uh, organized or spontaneous, but especially organized, um, try to be a bit clever about where you put yourself. In an organized jam session, usually you can kind of choose where you sit, if there is some space left, and try to Choose where you're going to sit according to some parameters, and the most important one is the instrument you're playing. Try to sit next to instruments which are similar to yours, and I mean similar in terms of function, not that much in terms of like similarity of like the family. For example, if you're playing flute, sit next to the fiddles, because you have a similar range. If you play viola, don't go with the fiddles, but more with the nickel harpes, because that's the same range. Or maybe even with the cellos, if you want to play more accompaniment. If you're playing guitar, maybe don't go with the mandolins, even if they are closer in technique to your instrument, but go with the accordions, because you can hear the chords that they are playing on the left hand, so and you can match them and play with them. And then if you're a bass line instrument, like cello or double bass, maybe go with the chord instruments, because you can listen to their chords and bring your bass line close to that, 
and if you're playing percussion or some kind of percussive instrument um, or if your chords are very percussive maybe also go close to the rhythmical part it's a bit like an orchestra it's a little folk orchestra try to think function it's not an absolute rule you can also um, change that parameter depending on what your goal is for example if you are a fiddle player but you want to learn to play chords more you can just go with the back pipe uh, with the cellos and so on if you uh, are a fiddle player and you have difficulties to keep the beat the tempo maybe it's a good idea to go close to the percussions guitars and rhythmical instruments this kind of stuff also of course if there is someone who plays really well, who really like the style of playing, it's very good to sit next to them and to have them in your ear, even if they play a totally different instrument than yours. So, now I would like to talk about how to suggest a tune. Because it's normal in jam session, both organized and spontaneous, that at some point you will have the possibility to suggest a tune, probably even several. That's everyone's place to suggest a tune during a jam session. And um, how to suggest a good tune that will put a good atmosphere to the jam session? Well, first I would say try to match what you have already heard. So if the style is more quiet and calm in this choice of tunes, try to choose a tune that is quiet and calm. If people are playing mostly tunes from Vamland, try to play a tune which is from around Vamland, maybe not from very far away, for example. Um, sometimes playing a very different type of music is actually very appreciated. I once went to a, an Irish jam session and I had basically no repertoire in common with the people there, but they really, really were motivated to hear some Scandinavian stuff. So it felt very weird, but I did play some Swedish stuff because they really wanted to. But sometimes people just don't want to, they want to stay in their comfort zone. So, like, try to suggest a tune that is a bit different and see how they react. So basically, how to suggest a tune? Um, I would say, when there is a little space, or if someone asks you to suggest a tune, just ask, people, do you know this tune? And you start playing your tune. Maybe they join you, then it's fine, tune is started, uh, everyone knows it, or almost, and it's fine. Maybe they don't, they don't start with you, maybe they start looking at each other like a bit unsure because they don't know the tune. In this case, what I suggest is to notice that and tell them like, oh people, I see you don't seem to know this tune, do you want to hear it once? And maybe you decide if you want to learn it or not. So you play your tune once, they listen, and then you see how they react. If they seem very motivated to learn the tune, well, that's fine, start playing it, start teaching it. If they talk together, they don't look really at you, and they maybe start another tune, it means that they are not interested. Don't take it personally, they're just not interested in that tune. You can try again later with another one. Um, also, when you suggest a tune, you're supposed to start it, lead it, and stop it. And if you are not comfortable with that, if you are not sure you can take the right tempo or to play it properly if people are looking at you or something like that, you can delegate. That's very okay. You know that this person plays way better than you or that this one is very comfortable leading a tune. Just ask them. like. Please, I would really like to play this tune, but I'm not sure I can start it. Can you do it for me? Something like that. Also, I'm gonna make a video about how to start and stop a tune, how to lead it and how to practice that, but that's for another video. The next point I want to talk about is recording and filming. Recording in jam sessions is usually very well accepted. There is no problem. Everyone is recording a tune that they want to learn, some, someone. Uh, so that's usually fine. It's nice to ask, but it's not compulsory. But filming, <sighs> that's not the same thing. We live in a society where it's totally normal, like it's considered normal, to just film anyone and put that on Facebook or something. I personally find it extremely rude. I will really get angry if someone films me without asking and then I find this video somewhere on the internet or something or even if they just film me, I don't like that at all. And I guess there are many people like me, <laughs> maybe not everyone, but I suggest that you always ask before filming. No matter if it's just filming one person's hand, 
so you can see the bowing patterns or if it's filming the general atmosphere of the jam session to keep a nice memory but just ask them like people can I please like film the atmosphere make a short video and then post it on Facebook to show my friends how fine it was there maybe they're not gonna agree and if someone doesn't agree don't film them be sure that everyone included in your video agrees that you take the video and that you use it in some way that you describe I think this is pretty important. Also, I want to quickly go over the subject of sheet music. My opinion is that it's totally fine to bring your sheet music to a jam session. I mean, probably an organized one, because spontaneous one is spontaneous, so you don't probably have sheet music with you, I don't know. Uh, I think it's totally fine to have your sheet music, to browse through, to find the tune that people are playing and to join, because you need your sheet music, that's okay. But, I would recommend you to not become annoying with your sheet music. Let me explain. If you start browsing a lot through your sheet music because you don't find a tune and you're like <laughs> and you start making a lot of noise flap 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 with the pages for example, this is really annoying for the other ones. Also if you complain because they play another version of the tune you have written or in another key, it's also very annoying. Basically sheet music is totally fine in my opinion in a jam session but usually folk music is transmitted by ear. So you are not supposed to have sheet music. It's okay that you have, but don't think that it's normal. And I strongly advise you to train your ear to learn by ear, because then you will save yourself a lot of energy and you will learn a new skill. And my last point I want to talk about is some social skills, because, I mean, jamming is a social occupation and there are some skills that can really help you. Uh, the first thing is about uh, versions of a tune or different keys. I already talked about that in my introduction to folk music tunes, folk, uh, Scandi folk tunes. Um, I really advise you to be very open to people who have different versions or keys of a tune and to not take it as something to be angry about but as an opportunity to learn more music. Like you knew one tune and suddenly you know it with another version or in another key. That's actually making your toolbox richer. So take it positively. And if they are angry at you because you play in another version, just don't listen. Also, remember that if you are not feeling okay in a jam session, if you are not feeling very welcome or anything, it is not about you. Learn to differentiate your musical you and your person you. They are very close, but they are not exactly the same person. We are very emotional about our music, very often. But don't take it personally. Those people maybe don't know you as a person, and maybe they would be your best friends, but maybe this time, in that situation, you were not adequate. Maybe your instrument were not adequate. It doesn't mean your instrument is bad. It's probably an awesome instrument, but it was maybe not adequate. For example, it was too loud. Or it was not practically adapted to the tunes they were playing. Or your musical skills were not adequate, but it doesn't mean they're bad. Even if you're a beginner, it's okay. Your skills are fine. Remember that all musicians started from zero. We were all beginners in the start. So you have totally the right to be a beginner. Just sometimes it's not adequate to the level of other people and they might just be a bit not tolerant enough, <laughs> basically. And last but not least, remember that Folk music is awesome, there are lots of great people there, friendly, welcoming and so on, but there are also people you are not gonna get along with. There are people who show off, there are people who talk a lot, me. There are people who talk very little and stay very quiet in a corner, and they are sh like people who know everything and want to correct everyone, and they are jerks, and so, so on, as in every group of human beings. Just, just keep that in mind, <laughs> it's not your fault. It is like that. My advice would be try to not be part of the annoying ones, try to be part of the nice ones. So that's all for today's, for today. <laughs> I, I can't speak good today. Um, I hope this was of some help for you, for your uh, musical moments, for your jam sessions. I hope you will have a lot of fun with other people in jamming. As usual, if you have questions about that or about anything Scandi folk related, um, or if you don't agree with what I said, or if you liked this video, or if you just want to ask further questions, just feel free to write to me, to ask me questions, to tell me what you thought, and so on. As usual, I like to get your messages. Uh, remember that 
every kind of support is really helping me, uh, especially on my Patreon page. I'm gonna put the link on the screen at the end of this video. Um, I am posting lots of stuff there. Uh, I already have some patterns. It's a really nice little bunch of people. I really... Also remember that uh, all kind of help does help me. All kind of support is super appreciated, especially on my Patreon. I'm gonna put the link on the screen at the end of this video. So please go have a look and if you can support me or support me in the way you find is good for you and is working for you, I will be super grateful. Any support is appreciated and is helping very much. So I hope you're gonna have a lot of fun playing um, jam sessions with people. I hope you're gonna meet very nice people to play with. See you next time.